when you have a piece such as this uh, that you're hollowing with the with the with the shoulder this wide, it's hard to have this caliper in position like this and put this inside and have that spring rod go past that uh, a shoulder there. Well, this one I can do it, but sometimes you don't even have that room to do it in there. So what, what can happen here is you just have it snug down here on the uh, uh, rod, the slide rod, and you can, see if I can show you this, bring this up. So then this will fit past the shoulder real easy and then you can slide this back down. By the way, it doesn't take very much practice to to get this back down to right right where you want it. Uh, it's just getting to know the tool a little bit. So that's an advantage. And and when on the upon the removal to clean it out, then you can also put it up there. Now, what this doesn't do though, it still doesn't allow you to move this back and forth on, on the slide rod. It'll stay there, but you can definitely move it here. And uh, uh, you're, you know, you want to, let's say, you want to find out where you're at right here. This is, seems to be a pretty curious place for you. You don't know if uh, it needs anything more or not. So a very easy way to determine the thickness right there is to to set this up, to set up the the, the blade and the uh, uh, spring rod, out the, the whole caliper, in the position that you're going to hollow this in. Okay, just set it up right there. But leave this spring rod loose so you can slide it back and forth. Okay, so you want to you want to put it right there. Okay, so you can put it in here. You can slide the 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 spring rod up there. Um, let's get this right for you. Okay, so then you can just pull it out by holding that. <clears throat> And this is second here, it slipped. Okay. <clears throat> okay, as you can see, uh, I'm already pretty thin right there, so I'll know not to touch that anymore. Anyway, I can go through the whole place or the whole uh, inside of here, and I can find out exactly. How, the thickness of, of everything. What, <clears throat> what measuring the, the, the thickness does for the operator is it, it gives them the knowledge they need and the confidence. And now, you know, I, I didn't know how thick this was. I, this has been sitting in, up in the shelf for a long time now. I have, you know, I'm not familiar with this piece anymore. So anyway, the, uh, now, but I quickly found out that I don't need to work in here anymore. Now up here or over here might be a total different story, but for right here I don't need to do anymore. So that gives me the knowledge and the confidence uh, of, of what, I, what to do and how to do it. Um, one, one big caution is that uh, you don't want to finish out a piece uh, down at the bottom first because you want to leave some meat there. There's when you're when when you're removing the material from here and you got a lot of torque on this uh, piece. So you don't want it so thin down here that you're going to just twist the the wood off. So remember that. That's uh, leave it up uh, leave it a little bit beefy until the last and you can go back and finish that out.
talking about uh, uh, the overall hollowing of a, a piece. I just completed that the video on uh, uh, from a, you know taking it from a curious knob on a um, round of maple to thinking it was going to be a bowl, but it turned out to be uh, a really nice little vase. I worked it back and forth. I worked I worked the top. I worked the side. Everything. So I guess as I over the years uh, in, in using uh, the hollow and cane tools, I've just come into uh, the the habit of working my pieces overall. Uh, don't take it down here to begin with uh, when you first start uh, to the finished grade. Don't take it down here. Don't take it down. Work it kind of down together. The tool is fast enough to where working it back and forth and readjusting the the caliper and the blade uh, is is not a bad thing at all. That it'll uh, it'll give you a, a nicer piece, and you're more assuredly of doing things right. One other thing that's really very important. If you're having a tough time with a piece, let's say for some reason this piece took four hours to sculpt just because it, things just weren't going right. And then you started hollowing it. And you get in and you, you get about you know half the, the material out of there and, and you, just, you, you just think, wow, I, this is going to go on and on and on. Wrap it up in a plastic bag. I leave it on the lathe, I leave it right where it is, I put a plastic bag over it, I bring that plastic bag around it, I wrap it around my chuck, and I put a magnet there to hold the plastic bag in place, and that's good for about three days. After about three days you, you, you should do something else with it if you're not going to finish turning it. Coming back in the morning nice and rested and refreshed, you're going to have a different perspective of what's going on. It's not going to, you're not going to feel like you're, you're, you're being defeated. You're going to feel like, okay, now I can do it. And so that's, you know, because these little guys can get to you if, uh, if you give them the upper hand. So now let's, uh, let's change uh, our mode just a little bit. And, uh, talk to you about the blade. <clears throat> Good morning from Crabtree Hall. Today I want to talk to you about just all the benefits of, of this tool which really lie within the you know a few places of course. Now, the overall tool being the size it is and everything uh, for the safety factor and the outrigger and all this. But I want to talk to you mostly about the the caliper and, and the blade today. Uh, that is, you know, it, the rest of the tool is just a, a platform for the blade to, to do its work. So, and as I've said before, uh, you can go to my uh, uh, website and you can uh, find there the different templates that uh, that I make. Um, and they're, they're on the, the web there that you can actually download this onto your computer and print it out. And, it's, and, and that printout is the same size as this with, with what all everything stands for. So you can glue that right onto a little piece of paneling like this and um, cut it out with a, a little saw or however you want to do it. But there's also written instructions. And for the white wine glass, there's a, a video that goes along with the written instructions on that. Um, so you have the templates, you have the written, and you have a video on, on the wine glasses. Uh, also, uh, on the website is a four-page written explanation of everything about the, the Halloween King that I could think of. So if you have questions or whatever questions you have, you should be able to print that out if you want to or read it on the web. And 
find in in the four pages the question that you have or the answer that you have for your questions. So anyway, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, and and uh, I keep getting more and more questions about the tool and and this and that and the other. So I think one of these days, uh, perhaps I'll I'll have it set up to where people can go to my website and that's my goal is to be able to have people go to my website answer their questions about what size tools and and the 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 blades and the caliper everything about it and uh, then I'll be satisfied with it but until then uh, we'll keep going here um, and <clears throat> so this today like I said is about the tools caliper mainly and also about the uh, uh, the blade on it. Um, when somebody first buys this tool, first time, second time they use it, they really think of it as a as a just a means to eliminate some some wood from the interior of something. And that's and, and that's basically uh, you know the bottom line of it. So that's all good and everything, but after this tool's been used some, people started catching on to that there's a lot more to this tool than just that basic wood removal. So the, in getting into this, I'll demonstrate today, uh, like about the caliper, um, um, you know, because it works and it works very well. Um, this means that uh, the shapes of vessels are endless. It does, I've not ever found anything, any shape that I want to do that I, I haven't been able to complete with this tool. So it, it, you have an abundance of delightful surprises when using this because it just it seems like it just keeps going and keeps going and uh, it, it's like you know, urging the operator on, you know, come on, let's go, let's go do something else, and things like that. So it's, uh, it's uh, just been a very nice experience for me, and, uh, and again, that reminds me that I do have some um, more pieces that I put in my gallery on the website, so you can, you can uh, uh, go there if you have any uh, uh, questions about it, or any curiosity. The uh, the caliper is the really the the essence of the tool. This gives you eyes on the inside. It gives you uh, it tells you it talks to you about what's going on when you're hauling. So we have here a right hand notch. Now with this notch here on the right hand side I'm able to put this tip out here I can also use this side of the blade a little bit but but this tip can be adjusted back and forth to follow a hole down a pilot hole down a narrow neck place because of the bend and everything uh, sometimes it's very difficult to get the a bigger tool down a neck of a uh, uh, a vase and uh, so a little bit of an adjustment you can put the tip over here or over here and you can work your way down that uh, uh, neck until you get into the the body of the the vase and then you can uh, um, uh, turn it and and uh, you can hollow it out a little bit more. You can take more material out and give yourself a little more wiggle room. Okay, so uh, that's where this handheld tool comes in real handy too. So anyway, then you have you. Let's say you go down to the bottom and, and to the hole to the pilot hole, and you can then you can turn this around. You can turn the. Uh, uh, blade so you can get to the side and everything and do the bulk of your your cleaning out okay the situation you have with the with the right hand notch blade when you want to 
start cleaning out or uh, going getting to the sides like when you put the, the spring you move the spring up here say well you have this tip here and you can make a groove or even go through the bottom of your piece real easy with with this guy down at that area <clears throat> but you have to have it there if you're going to use this side of the blade so that's where the left hand notch comes in okay the left hand notch as you can see uh, can be turned so you can use the broad side or the curved side of of the blade to do clean up or you know to work with it and the tip of the blade is hidden up in the table of the tool so now you don't have any troughs in the bottom or even in the shoulder sometimes uh, because of the the tip of the blade this this blade can also be used for open vessels um, such as like the southwest uh, vessels that uh, are so popular you can use them for uh, pretty wide mouth vases and things like that bowls all of that so uh, this comes in very handy for this and this is absolutely the uh, uh, blade of choice for that type of application so let's get on with this bowl here this is a pretty dry bowl um, I think it's probably around 9 10 percent moisture and we'll check it out uh, that says about 11 9 to 10 uh, so it's it's uh, uh, pretty dry and uh, I would be able to uh, um, go ahead and finish this out so uh, what I want to make sure of first of all is do I have enough bottom to finish it out this is just getting to know the piece so I do this my trusty little depth finder okay I have plenty of bottom on here making sure that I have the proper adjustment on the the blade I'm going to be doing some cleaning out so I have the blade adjusted like this that'll give me the ability to follow the contour of the bowl down and around I don't go clear down to the bottom to begin with I want to concentrate on this part here mainly right now um, I, I can catch this later because I'll probably uh, readjust my blade some okay so here we go we'll we'll see this is dry and it's very out of whack very out of uh, very out of round So I'm just going lightly. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to uh, take out a great deal. What I'm running into is what I thought I would run into on this. It sounds to me like this uh, bowl moved pretty bad and I don't even know if I can save it or not uh, we have a uh, some tear out here tear out here in here looks pretty good well you know maybe we're not that far off let let's see what happens here we'll continue easy 
as I go. As you can see, it's like feathers coming out of there. Sound like it's fairly uh, solid throughout now. Let's check it out. Okay, have a little bit of uh, uh, old wood here, and you know, <clears throat> I don't even know if I would even mess with this anymore uh, as far as trying to get it all out. I just don't. On a lot of these bowls, I just don't think it's that necessary. But what I would like to get out is as much of the tear out as I as I can. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to raise the tool rest. The tool itself is going to go over my right shoulder and I'm going to use this as a shear cutters. Now again, just barely touching it, okay? Barely touching it. anywhere from like 80 to 95 percent of the tear out out. Now I still have a little bit left here. I, I you know there's but there's hardly any compared to what there was. So that's another advantage to this this uh, tool is that you can use it for a shear scraper somewhat in a bowl and it saves a lot of sanding and a lot of time. I raise the uh, uh, tool rest probably about an inch, uh, maybe a little less, and there you go. Have a good day. And again, go Hawks!